Good morning, Honors Bio. This is Mr. McGee, and I'm talking to you today because you do, uh, you, well, I'm not in class and you have a substitute. So I'm going to ask you to follow this tutorial very carefully so you can see exactly how to do this. If you're stuck, go back on the video, watch again very carefully. Today you're going to be making a graph and a table from our enzyme lab results that we did in class on Wednesday. Make sure you take your results and you make a nice graph and table exactly as I show you here. You're ultimately going to take your table and graph and paste it on this template. Put your table here, graph here, and then answer these analysis questions. When you're done, you are going to submit this assignment and mark as done on Google Classroom. So make sure you do that and let us go ahead and get started. These are our results from the other day. We had six groups in total. I'm not sure what happened to one of my groups, but I seem to have lost your data. Regardless, you are one of the lab counters in question. This is the data that you provided me. We're going to make this look a little more tidy, so let's get started with organizing our table and making it look nicer. You're going to highlight this here, and let's add a little background color. How about a little gray like this? That makes it look nice. Let's go ahead now and add some uh, little dividers down here, some borders. We're going to highlight these cells and go up here to borders, and let's tell it to make a border like this. And I do not want a border that's that thick. So I'm going to go down here on borders and click on line thickness, and I'm just going to tell it to be a thin line just like that. I do on this next part want to separate a line right here, though, that's a little thicker. And the reason why is if you look at our table, this is our independent variable, the time of the enzyme catalyzed reaction, and this is measured in seconds. This entire area, just like in our corn lab, is our dependent variable, the amount of uncatalyzed hydrogen peroxide, and this is in milliliters. Notice we have all of our trials, but ultimately our mean is really what we care about. So what we, what we want to do is create a little separation right here that's a little bigger. And what I would tell you to do is to highlight your independent variable, go over here to border, and create a little border like this, but now that you've told it we want that little line, we're going to go here and make it a little thicker. And there you go. It's a nice little border that separates the independent and dependent variable so it's a little easier and nicer in appearance to see. Next thing we need to do is calculate our mean. You could do this by hand, but it's, ex well, I, I would say Excel, but we're on Google Sheets. It does it all for you. Click on a cell you want it to calculate. Go over here to Functions, Average. And then what you're going to do is highlight your raw data and click enter. Do the same thing. Click average, highlight the data, and then click enter. Okay, and we just continue this process all the way down for all of our five variations of our independent variable. Whoops, not that cell. Anytime you mess up, you can always just go back here and undo and hit control uh, Z and that will undo your mess. Now that we have that, we want to adjust a few other things and we'll be all done. First of all, I like to highlight all of these cells. I like them to be nice and centered, just like this. I don't like them to be uh, kind of off to the side, so we'll just do that and make them nice and centered. The other thing is we want to work on our data points, and our sh I should say our decimal places. Notice these ones only have one decimal place, and this one has two. And notice even our mean is all over the place. Let's go ahead and fix that. Highlight just your raw data. Group 1 here all the way down to the lower portion. And then you're going to go up here to this decimal area and you're going to add decimal points. Except that's too many. We're going to take them away and keep one decimal place of precision. And that is because of the measurements we took. They were only precise to one decimal point. Our mean looks good, but here's the difference. And you'll hear this more if you take IB with me next year. Your processed data should have one more decimal point than your raw data. So we're going to go ahead and add an extra decimal point because that should have a one more decimal point than our raw data had. And with that said, I think our graph, or I'm sorry, our table looks really nice. Let's go ahead and copy this table. Highlight all of the cells and go up here to copy under edit. And now we're going to open our Google Docs file. And right under this table section, I'm going to click right there, a little spot, and go up here to edit and paste. You can paste it as unlinked. That's not necessary there. And voila, you have your table pasted just like that. 
Uh, the only thing I will make a comment on is notice it doesn't fit well here. That's because of the way it pasted. You can always come up here and highlight and change the text size, or you could just kind of come in here and fidget a little bit with making this spread out a little more until it does fit. So I'll let you decide what you want to do there. Go down here and let's, uh, make, a, let's make a graph. I'm going to hit escape to take that little bar off of there, but let's go ahead and make our graph now, shall we? To make our graph, you need to remember that you have an X and a Y axis. We need to tell the computer what's our X axis, and in this case, our independent variable. You're going to highlight your raw data for your independent variable. Then what you need to do is tell it our raw data for our dependent variable. And the biggest mistake people make is they highlight all of these cells because they're the dependent variable, but you don't do that. We just want the average of all of our dependent variable trials. So what we did again is we highlight our independent variable. Now you're going to do the following. Hold control on your keyboard and then click on your raw data for the average dependent variable. That's it. So again, you highlight these cells, hold control on your keyboard and highlight these cells. Do not highlight the titles or anything but the numbers. With that said, let's go ahead here and go to insert chart. And we should get a little bar graph just like this. Now, we don't want a bar graph for this, so go up here to column, and we ultimately want a scatter plot just like this. From this point on, almost anything can uh, be adjusted in this section here, which is customize. First thing we're going to do, I am not a big fan of grid lines. I'm going to go here to grid lines, and for my vertical, I'm going to tell it white color. For my horizontal, I'm going to tell it a white color as well. That'll get rid of the grid lines. It makes it look a little bit nicer. Next thing we want to do is work on our, um, our titles and our axis. So let's take a look again at our little axis down here. Notice it only goes up to 400, and there is no 500. And we should go to 500 because you want to overshoot that a little bit. So you can double click on this line down here, or in this case, just single click it. Or you can come over here to customize and just click horizontal axis. And we're going to tell it a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 500. That is going to set the scale for us, and we are done with that. For this one, our Y uh, axis, we don't want all these .00 decimal points behind it. I can click on this, or I can just click here on vertical axis, but I'll show you. Click on that, and we don't need to change our minimum, maximum values. It looks scaled appropriately, but we do need to get rid of those decimal points. So what we're going to do is go to number format, go to custom, and from that point on, we don't need to do anything else. If we add a bunch of zeros, you'll notice it changes it to the thousandths. If we add like a point zero, it'll make it like point zero after, but we don't need to do any of that. You just go here to number format custom and leave it blank and the rest is kind of history. Okay. Next thing we want to do is change this title. Our X access title should be the same as over here and that is correct. It matches up. Google Sheets did all the work for us. But here's the problem with the Y access. Mean is not a title. On the other hand, the mean amount of uncatalyzed H2O substrate is a good title. We want to add that in there, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, go here to mean. Okay, right. we are the mean amount of uncatalyzed H2O2 substrate. And our units, milliliters with parentheses. Make sure you have a unit and a uh, title on each axis. Here's a problem. It doesn't fit. You can work this several ways. Clicking on it here. Uh, well, actually, I'll click back on it here. You can go under text font size and change the font and make it, or the text size and make it smaller or something to make it fit, or you could just do this. Make your graph slightly taller and it should fit in there just like that. Next thing we want to do. We want to do some processing. We want a tread line. Go here to series, and under series, you'll notice we have a tread line. Click on it, and look at how it fits our data. From this point, you can do a couple things. It may not be a linear data. It could be polynomial. Uh, those fit. 
Notice exponential does not fit. We should definitely leave it back at linear because I think we'll just leave it alone like that. There appears to be a linear trend. And if you want, you can play around with this color here. You want to pick a purple color, pick a, you know, blue color. I guess as long as I can see it, that's all that matters. But I'll let you guys pick and choose if you want to do that. And while we're at it, if you want to pick on data points, we should be able to just click on them here or something. If you want to change data points around and play with colors, I really don't mind. Just make sure you're keeping time to get your work done. But ultimately, this is a finished graph except for the title. This is not a title that's going to work. We are going to want to change our title to something describing our entire graph. In this case, how about a title like this? Something like um, enzyme enzyme activity over time. You can say anything like uh, the effect of enzyme reaction rate over time. You can say anything that's describing the independent and dependent variable together. And uh, I like it nice and centered. You can just go down there and, and uh, that's pretty much it. Here's our graph. In order to copy this, you click on the graph. Make sure you're not clicking this inner area though. You click somewhere on the outside like this. And then you go up here to copy. And then you go up here to your Google Docs and you go up here and paste your graph just like this okay we obviously probably want to shrink that down a little bit although you can keep it smaller and that's probably too small I'm gonna clear a little space there let's get this to fill the sheet just like this so it's all on one page but we can get the graph as big as possible and that was probably a little too big there yeah it's probably as big as I'm gonna get it and I can center it nice and neatly just like that Likewise, I'm going to see if I can center this table. It doesn't want to center, but I could probably go up here to the lines. This is definitely something I'm getting used to, if you can't tell. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a way to center that. You can play around with this if you want to, but it looks nicer. Actually, what we could do is add a little background here, too. If I go up here to this section, I wonder if there's a way to add a background. And if you figure out a way, that's fine. But that would be nice if we had a little background or something there, but or something kind of a border or something like that. If you find out, let me know how to do that. Anyways, next thing we need to do is do a little processing. You answer these questions. We could probably move this up just so it fits on the paper nicely. Answer the questions. And then we want to answer this question about R squared. I thought I'd show you how to do it real quick. R squared is a measure of how tight data fits to a, a tread line. An R square that equals 1 will be right on the dotted line, a perfect measurement. R square that is equal to 0 has no correlation. The dots are scattered all over the place. Anything in science above 0.7 is considered a strong R square value. That's a really good number. To calculate this, we're going to have to go back to our, uh, to our Google Sheets here, and you're going to type exactly what I'm going to type here in the following equals rsq and then left parenthesis uh, icon without doing anything else what you're going to do is this highlight your raw data and uh, or i'm sorry your independent variable hold control and highlight your mean uh, numbers as well just like we did when we created a graph and then you hit enter and that is your answers if you look at it uh, this number is pretty close to 1. There is really no other way to look at it. It's almost exactly 1, which means if you think about it, all the dots are almost perfectly on the line and we have almost a perfect predictability. You could almost forecast exactly where that line is going to go and that's what you're going to do here is you're going to make a prediction where is it going to be at 700 seconds and a thousand seconds of time. Talk about your confidence and then experimental error is this part you can answer. So with that said, please be nice to the substitute. Watch this video carefully if there's a little stuff you don't know. But again, try to have a good time with this because we are going to do this uh, if you take my IB class, and we'll work on this a little bit later. This is Mr. McGee. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you later.